Baba Bowie. Private Lender Podcast, Episode 30. The Private Lender Podcast quote of the day comes to us from Jim Rohn, who said, Money is usually attracted, not pursued. This is the Private Lender Podcast, the show that shares practical advice and know-how for new and seasoned lenders, from private mortgages on single-family houses to joint ventures on commercial projects and beyond. Discover details about investment vehicles that you won't find at your local bank or online broker. Listen and learn from private lenders and real estate investors, as well as from professionals and entrepreneurs, as they share the details, strategies, and the insight that allows for successful and prosperous lending. Now, get ready to increase your ROI. Here's your host, Keith Baker. Welcome, Lender Nation, to the Private Lender Podcast, the show dedicated to teaching private lenders how to mitigate risks and increase yields. My name is Keith Baker, and this is episode number 30. And today, we'll be giving answers to one of the most frequent questions I hear when I'm at RIAs or meetups or other real estate events, and that is, how do I find private lenders, or how do I meet them, or how do I get private money? So I'll be tackling that answer for you today, which is going to be a little bit different than the, the normal scope. So today will be dedicated more to the borrower than the lender, but I think it helps if the lender hears it from this perspective so they can process it. If that makes any sense to you, stick around because we'll be right back after thanking our sponsor. 713 RIA invites you to come out and experience one of the fastest growing RIA groups in the greater Houston area. The goal of 713 RIA is to provide quality information to every level of investor. The organizers Landon Rothstein and Ray Sasser have found that no matter where you are in the investing process, those investors who effectively network are far more successful than those who don't. And 713 RIA is geared to help you both get the information you need and provide the networking that will propel your investing. For more information, please visit 713RIA.com. That's 713REIA.com. I'd like to thank 713 RIA for their sponsorship of the Private Lender Podcast. And I'd also like to encourage everyone listening to go out to the next meeting and learn a wealth of knowledge. And you can stop off at my booth and say hello to the Private Lender Podcast vendor table. And please don't forget one of the biggest events of its kind ever on August 25th and 26th. The Private Lender Podcast will be at the Quest IRA Self-Directed IRA Expo, the first of its kind ever in Dallas, Texas. Don't forget to use promo code Baker Expo for a 25% discount off of your tickets. You can go to the show notes page for the links uh, for that event and for more information. I highly, highly recommend if you can hear it, make your way to Dallas and check out one of the most powerful, powerful wealth building vehicles and what you can do with it, uh, the, the Roth IRA and, and talk to Quest. It's, um, it's going to be a good event. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to speak on a panel. Uh, with some with some heavy hitters uh, and one of the the first people I uh, that was a mentor of mine, so I'm I'm really looking forward to to the uh, Quest Expo. So please go check that out as soon as you can. Okay, so episode thirty solo cast. I'm going to talk about when I go to Riaz or other meetups. Generally speaking, the first question: if anyone as any experience will ask me what my rates are, what my preferred rates terms are. And when I tell them what I prefer to do, or if I don't like what they want to do, they're, they're, I don't like what they, they do as far, in terms of investing. Uh, they want to know if I know anyone. And then they'll ask, some will ask, well, where can I find a private lender? And I've I've had to answer this on the, on the fly a few times, but now I'd like to take a few moments and kind of condense uh, my my off the cuff answers into hopefully something that's a little more coherent for the uh, beginning investor or uh, an investor who doesn't have a whole dearth of knowledge and experience. The first question I would like to ask any potential borrower is, how many deals have you successfully completed? Are you under five? Are you under ten? What type of deals were they? Were they flips? Were they owner finance deals? What what genre of real estate investing or what niche do you prefer to stay in? Because I, as a lender, I think it's best if you find borrowers who uh, are specialized. Almost, you know, they they're very comfortable doing the same type of of investment. So, so same type of flip, say in the one twenty to one fifty range that they they do day in and day out versus a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar distress sale that may or may not pay off at the end of, of ninety days. 
So that's what I like to look and I'd ask you, the borrower, what what is it you want to accomplish? What is it have you accomplished? And if you're not that experienced, I would highly recommend go and get hard money. I know you're probably thinking, why am I advocating for hard money? Because there's a time and a place for everything. And if you're just starting off, hard money is going to be an extra set of eyes for you. They are going to walk that property. They're going to they're going to vet that deal. They're going to run it through. They're going to stress test it. And there, yes, it's going to be more expensive, but you're going to have a better partner. You know, if you could just go get any private lender, say one that's out of state, he's not going to. If you get in a bind or have a question, he's not going to be able to help you. Whereas that hard money lender has people on their team, appraisers, inspectors. They know rehabbers who can go out and fix things if they need to be fixed fairly quickly. So, yes, they do meddle in your business more. They cost more. But if you're just starting off and you only have a few deals under your belt, I highly, highly recommend you use hard money just to keep yourself safe. And if hard money won't touch it, your deal that you're looking for, then I wouldn't do the deal. So if you're beyond hard money, the cheapest thing out there is bank money. Usually it takes the longest to get, but it has the lowest interest rates. And this can come from a cash out refi of your house or maybe a home equity line of credit or even just a good old fashioned, another mortgage if you have 20% down or a signature loan. You know, depending on your, your credit worthiness and, and your how wealthy you are and what type of portfolio you, you have, you might be able to get some relatively cheap money from the bank with hopefully only marginal delays and, and hoops to jump through. But it's the first place a lot of people start. The next place to look for private lenders, I would say, or money would be into the private lending side of things would be family, moms, dads. Rich uncles, stepdads, stepmoms, step grandparents, somebody who believes in you and is willing to put up some funds is always great. And a lot of times you can get it at a very reasonable rate. This money will come very cheaply. However, just know that if you mess up that Thanksgiving or Christmas or the holidays or family get togethers might be a little interesting after uh, a deal that goes sour. So you have to weigh it. Do what's do you really want to borrow from family? A lot of people do. A lot of people regret it. So you, it's something that you have to look at yourself. I think as a, an individual investor and and make up your mind if uh, if things go south, is your dad or whoever you borrowed it from is it going to sour that relationship? Because if it is, you probably want to stay away from it and keep the keep the blood relationship going as as best as can be. The next one would be friends, which I would. Hesitate just as much as family, <laughs> uh, but I do know investors that do you like sorry they do utilize their friends' money and they've been successful at it and the friendships have thrived. I've also seen the exact opposite of that and seen some pretty good friendships go to the crapper pretty quickly. So again, you need to weigh uh, the old the old adage: if uh, you want to borrow money from a friend, which which do you value the most? And that'll probably be a pretty decent guide for you. And the last place is where I like to go, and some of the other private lenders that I know will frequent on occasion, and those are real estate investment associations, RIAs, meetup groups. Uh, mentors will oftentimes put on meetups or happy hours. Uh, also, self-directed IRA custodians will oftentimes put together, since they're not allowed to like straight up advertise but uh, you know, they can't broker, but they can they can put things together. They can put people in the same room, and these are great places to meet your private lenders. And if you're just starting off, just keep in mind that private lenders might not be so willing to jump on board with your project. And that's why if you can build up a track record of utilizing hard money or other sources of money, and you know have the have a very nice paper trail, a very nice portfolio book of proof of evidence of the deals that you've done, the closing statements, HUD ones, all that good stuff, you're going to have a better chance, at least with somebody like me, who's a little bit more conservative when it comes to private lending, because that is my retirement. So I, I tend to hold on to things a little a little tighter. With that, I prefer to speculate in other areas like Wall Street, <laughs> uh, for example. But that's the number one place to go is I would say, you know, RIA meetings. You got to get out there and socialize, unfortunately. Even if you're an introvert, 
real estate is a team sport. You don't do any, you don't do anything by yourself, by your lonesome. You're going to have it. You need to have a team or you're going to have a team. So you might as well pick the best that you can and vet those people and meeting and shaking hands is a big part of that. And even if, you know, I'm just starting off, I don't know what I can do. I can't offer anything to anybody except a lunch, but they're busy. You know what? This is one of the best things you can do is go volunteer for these RIAs and these meetups and go be seen and stick your hand out, introduce yourself. You're going to get blown off probably early on, but keep going. Be seen consistently. Start making deals. Start doing deals. Use the hard money. Talk to people about it. Ask questions as you go into a deal. And don't be afraid of looking silly. We all start from the same spot and we all make mistakes. But this way is going to build your credibility such that after you get a few deals under your belt that are successful and people talk about you and you get a bit of a reputation, you're going to be known as somebody who can accomplish a project and finish it. And then private lenders are going to be more apt to loan to you after you have a pretty good track record and a consistent record of pretty much the same type of investing. Some people stick to a very specific area, like Philip Carranza, who was interviewed several episodes ago. He sticks to the east side of downtown Houston. He knows that market extremely well. And that's that's somebody you want to you want to become somebody like that with a good reputation and a reputation for knowing what you're doing, more importantly. And then that money will come to you. People will be seeking you out to do a deal. Hey, let me know the next time you're doing a deal. I've got some money sitting over here. How close are you to, to closing on the house? I'd like to put some money to work. You need to get out there and be known. It's not going to do you any good if you just start asking people if you can borrow money. You're not going to get very far. So, I, again, I guess I'm just beating a dead horse here, but I really stress the social aspect of real estate investing. And not only should borrowers do this, lenders should do the same as well. Go volunteer, be seen, be around, eat some dog food if you have to. But most of the successful investors that I've seen in and around Houston are the same people that you see all the time. And they're active. They're not just the same people that go to all the meetings and take notes and say, oh, that's, 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 that's cool. These are people who go to these same meetings but get up and do testimonials or they'll do case studies. Oftentimes, if a mentor is putting a meetup together, they'll have their students come up, start paying attention to these people. Because mentor students oftentimes already have that extra set of eyes. And if you trust that mentor, then maybe that opens the door to loaning to somebody with less experience. But as long as it's going through their mentor's purview and control and direction, it can be very lucrative for the lender. So to recap, let's look at the different types of money for you borrowers out there, if you can get it. Hard money, if you're starting off fresh and you're green, got to go get the hard money. To me, it's like getting your first credit card when you're 18. You need to build up some credit, basically. You need to build up some experience. Hard money is a great way to do that. And it's also safer. It's like having a partner. In that sense, that's how it's safer. Banks, HELOCs, cash out refis, et cetera, family and friends, Good luck with that, or good luck with that. It might work for you, but think about it. I highly stress thinking about it before you borrow from any blood or friends. And then the, the meetups, the RIAs, the self-directed IRA custodian events. Go hit these up. There are a lot of people there with money. There are a lot of people there who are looking for deals. And start sh sticking your hand out there, shaking. Grip and grin, baby. Grip and grin. Do the dog and pony show. Pay your dues. And you, too, will find private lenders. And you private lenders will find borrowers who have come up through the ranks. And maybe they've gotten their, their, skin, their knees skinned a little bit. But you can watch them as they do this. And not only does this lead to potential private mortgages, this could lead to JV deals. It could lead into multifamily, into commercial, into retail, mixed use. You, you, the sky's the limit. How much work do you want to put into this? That's how much you're going to get out of it. Now, I never said this was a get-rich-quick scheme, but it's a good way 
to get your foot in the door, especially if you got a corporate gig, got some nice golden handcuffs. You want to start doing some flipping and whatnot, Mr. Borrower? This is what you do. Same thing for the lender. In the same situation, got a nice cush job or a job you hate. Start getting out there. Start networking. Make the time. And start building that career. And building that track record on both sides as a borrower and a lender. And go make some money. Well, I think that's going to conclude my rant for today. I'd like to to thank you for sharing your time and listening as I, I talk about some what I think is fairly obvious, but it, the the question comes up quite a bit uh, as I meet more and more more and more folks at the Private Lender Podcast table at RIA's and and other uh, meetups and whatnot. And I just want to remind everyone about the Quest Self Directed IRA Expo, the first of its kind, in Dallas, Texas. August 25th and 26th, 2018. And you go to privatelenderpodcast.com for the show notes. This is episode 30. And you can get the links to the discount, 25% discount with promo code Baker Expo. So that's going to do it for episode 30. Thank you guys for sticking with me this far. Stick around. We've got some exciting things planned for the Private Lender Podcast in the next few months. So hope to see you there. I hope to see you on the next episode. Happy investing and lending. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Private Lender Podcast with your host, Keith Baker. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit privatelenderpodcast.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review, and we'll catch you next time. Baba Bowie.